as the world becomes smaller and smaller and we see uh, our problems are no different uh, than the problems in other countries and their problems have significant effect on us, it becomes important for academic institutions to engage in global health. UCSF Proctor Foundation and Aravind Eye Institute in Madurai, India have been collaborating for nearly two decades. The relationship with Aravind actually started in 1991 when we first went there to look at the corneal ulcer problem they have and it's continued until this day. But Aravind has gone on now to become the largest eye hospital in the world, as you probably know. They do 200,000 cataract operations a year and they see over 2 million patients. And Aravind is known just worldwide to be one of the, the meccas, the hubs for ophthalmology now. I mean, people come and train across the world to come and do cataract surgery, clinical research, as well as um, laboratory research at Aravind. We're currently involved in three projects here at Aravind. The largest of those is something called the Steroids for Corneal Ulcers Trial, and it's a National Eye Institute sponsored um, trial. And at Proctor, we're the coordinating center. It's a multi-center study, um, a very classic randomized trial looking at the effect of steroid treatment for bacterial corneal ulcers. The steroids for corneal ulcer. It was a million dollar question. People were asking in your country for 30 years. And there was a lot of um, feedback from ophthalmologists from the country. They collected, will you use steroids? Yes, I will use steroids. 80% they say, yes, I will use steroids for bacterial corneal ulcer. But it's all anecdotal. Simple reason is you can't find enough sample to say steroids helps or not. Two years we have recruited more than 250 patients and the 2010 January that's the end of the project, it's a four years project and uh, we will uh, cover the sample, adequate sample. Then it's easy to analyze and you publish and tell the people whether it works or not. There are a few reasons that make it great to do this study at Aravind. One is that it's a huge problem in South India. The problem in South India is 10 or 20 times more than the problem in the U.S. And in India, people get cataracts in their 40s and 50s rather than their 70s and 80s. We can't study it in the U.S. We don't get the volume of patients. So the problem is bigger in South India. They have the patient population, but also Aravind Hospital is great for clinical research. So we're really hoping to be able to answer the question of whether steroid treatment as adjunctive treatment uh, will make a difference in outcomes as far as vision and infiltrate scar size in corneal ulcers. Uh, it's a very practical question, but something that we wouldn't be able to answer without having a center such as Aravind. But we feel like they're very scientifically relevant questions that are very important to answer and would benefit patients around the world. UC's mission, I feel, is it's a marriage of basic science, that's state of the art, like what's happening in Mission Bay, and grassroots involvement with people on the ground. UCSF trainees and students work at Aravind to enhance their training years and help build research capacity in India. So we've just arrived, we've only been here for two days and already being in the clinic um, for just a few hours have seen um, all kinds of pathology that I certainly have not seen in the United States and wouldn't necessarily have the opportunity to see. I've seen some corneal dystrophies, um, really rare um, genetic diseases, all different kinds of corneal ulcers. I mean, these are things I just read about in my books and now I come here in the first couple of days and I've seen them, you know, and that's just amazing to see and, and to know that um, those things are out there. Building a research capacity in India is very, very important. It is mutually beneficial. They have the instruments, they have the technology, and uh, we should do at least whatever is possible here, then we can have their collaboration. At the same time, certain studies can be done only in this setup. There are certain diseases very, very common here that gets prioritized in developing country. 
so we have to be uh, having our own research projects and uh, acting as a PA uh, to work more closely with our patients. I think on the Aravind end, there's been a more recent interest in developing their infrastructure for doing research. And I think that's where us coming in and being able to work together with them has been a very fruitful relationship. There's an, really a, an importance to be able to help people underserved internationally as well as domestically. And that's for a number of reasons. You learn from both patient populations. And UCSF has a really unique way of kind of cultivating that for their trainees as well as their staff. They give you opportunities to see and help with the cutting edge technology that they have there in the States and to be able to apply those internationally. I think we're just at the tip of the iceberg for, for the potential research that could be done between Aravind and Proctor Foundation and UCSF. We've been able to accomplish a lot, but it's really clear to me every time I come here that there's so much more potential. We want further collaboration. We are not um, asking funding or anything. So we never ask funding, we never ask money. We want exchange of skill and scientific knowledge. Uh, you are not only helping Aravind people, you are not only helping Aravind eye care system, you are helping people in a developing country, particularly Indians, where the disease is more rampant, more prevalent. By collaborating with Aravind and other collaborative research in general, we're really able to answer questions that can have an impact and translate into direct patient care. If there's institutional collaborations, it's, it's a platform for long-term relationship. Researchers may come and go, but there is a structure there of collaboration that will continue, and uh, it's long-term. You know, 10 or 15 years from now, you won't see Jack, you won't see me, you may not see Dr. Srinivasan, but you'll see Nisha and Dr. Prajna, or someone new who hasn't come along yet. So I think it's uh, continuing generation to generation.